Welcome back my faithful legionnaires, today we are back in GTA 5 and doing another mod review slash showcase. Now if you haven't already guessed what one it is by the thumbnail, you are in the wrong place. So legionnaires, without further ado, let's hop inside our faithful Nissan Titan and go to our location. Now we're still waiting on anyone from Nissan you know to maybe get in contact with us to sponsor the channel because like I said, we are going to be featuring this bad boy in all our GTA episodes. Now we are driving to a reasonably close location. We haven't spawned it in yet for the simple fact it is an absolute awesome machine. Now actually here might actually be a good spot. We might actually just go outside the airfield just because it's a little bit big. So Legionnaires, we will leave it there. I think here's good actually. So we will hop out of our nice very nice Nissan Titan. It is an absolute beauty of a machine. And we will spawn in our prize possession in this episode. So Legionnaires, we will be right back. And there she is, Legionnaires. We have gotten to another area. Unfortunately, the last one was not quite good enough. But here she is. The beauty of this ship is just second to none. I, can, I can't even talk, it's so nice. And we will say thank you for Nissan to getting us here in our beautiful Titan. Even though I know it wasn't Nissan that made this mod, I have made an episode on that particular mod. If you go look in the playlist, you'll find it there. Now, this one is about the USS Voyager Intrepid class. Now, I do have some technical manual stuff about it, which if you guys are interested, you will be here and listening to it. But I wager you guys are just here to look at the ship itself. So if you don't want to really listen to me, just mute me and enjoy the ship itself. So, ah, uh, Michael's taking a good blink. Because, you know, why the hell not? Oh, hang on, he's opening his eyes again very slowly. Now, stuff with you, Michael. This is the USS Voyager. Registration number NCC74656, if I remember correctly. Uh, where is it? It should say it on the hull. Where are you? Where are you? There it is. See? There we go. See? I did not lie. And like I said, it is an Intrepid class uh, exploratory science vessel. It, she is not a vessel that is designed for combat, but she does see a decent amount of combat in the Delta Quadrant itself. And there is one of the famous docking ports, or no, not docking port. Yeah, they do use those to dock with things. Yeah, but it's also like one of the entrance to the cargo bay, if I'm not mistaken. Now this model is absolutely stunning. The, uh, the, the attention to detail is awesome. I, I, I cannot, like, it's the same creator as that has done all of our other Star Trek mods so far, but this one is just second to none, I think. I know it's not actually to scale because the overall length is 15 decks. I don't think you'd be able to fit 15 decks into this. But if you could, that is actually pretty damn cool. Now, it, it has a top speed of warp 9.975 and it can sustain it for up to 12 hours. And this is like in canon... Uh, information on this a beautiful machine it also has 11 phaser arrays photon torpedo launchers and it is captained by Catherine Janeway who is a really really awesome captain and personally one of my favorites I especially like her when she ends up getting rid of that ridiculous bun hair after like season three or whatever and she's got that nice short puffy hair kind of like it like that now if you look under here this would be where the front torpedo launchers are right there and there. The main deflector looking awesome. Now if you come out to the back here, this is where technically the two rear facing torpedo launchers are, but it does not show that unfortunately. Now it doesn't actually fire rear torpedoes, which would be cool. I mean, later on in an update, if you're you're listening to this, uh, the creator of the mod, you know, try and if it's possible. Now. This is the main shuttle bay, which you can find the Delta Flyer that can come out of it. Now, I was thinking about putting the Delta Flyer in this episode as well, but I thought we would just focus on the beauty of this ship itself. Now, overall length in world, I'm not too sure if it is actually overall length in this, it is 343 meters. 
which doesn't seem that big, but it also is at the same time. It, it's one of those um, measurements that just makes it sound weird, but big at the same time. Now up here is where the phaser arrays would be, which is all those little buggers there. And then you got the good old escape pods here and there. And then I wonder if, Yes, this would be Captain Janeway's ready room, if I'm not mistaken. And believe it or not, the, a little bit of Star Trek uh, fun fact here, those windows in the actual show are just reused um, windows from 10 forward in Star Trek The Next Generation, which I found pretty damn cool. Now, it's got all these awesome little details on it, which you can't go wrong with. I personally love the look of this ship. It is one of my... Reasonable favourite, but it is my mate, my, my, my good friend, perfect ship. He loves this thing, especially when it's pimped out on Star Trek Online. So, Legionnaires, ah, oh, one more thing I forgot to touch on. Unfortunately, the nacelles do not rise. That is one little flaw I was a bit sad about, but that is okay. It is still an absolute awesome model that you can have flying around in your GTA. Now, if you have the settings just just right you will have no problems getting this thing to fly around perfectly for you so legionnaires i will hop inside it and that way you guys can have a good look see at what that beastie can do i personally love the ship and i'm going to try and figure out a way for it to stay in my game so legionnaires bear with us and we will see you inside that ship it's hours later it's like that my faithful legionnaires we are in voyager herself or himself depending on what way you want to look at it now as you just saw this ship is absolutely remarkable it's got some absolutely awesome features now this is the view from the cockpit not exactly the best not exactly where the bridge would be on voyager but that is a okay as well because this ship does look the part at least on the outside which you guys can tell but that's not what you're here for you're not here to listen to me rabble you're here to look at this thing up in the air so let's do it up we go now we will do the usual autopilot let it fly around by itself but before we do that i will take control of the helm itself and do some flying so First of all, before we move any for move any bit more forward, and I cannot English today. Like I said, it does have two weapons. It's got the cannon and missiles, which are really cool. I prefer the missiles because they actually shoot out of where the missiles would be shooting from, which I think is really cool. Now it's got the lasers or cannons, as you were. They don't unfortunately come out of the the phaser strips. I had to remember what they were called again. The phaser strips, they come out right there. Like, out of the actual saucer section. Which is a little funny, but it's not the worst thing in the world. So, just bear that in mind when you're flying around in this awesome machine. Now, this ship can get some really good maneuverability. It's actually reasonably fast for its size as well. So, she can even do some good old barrel rolls, which looks awesome. And the fact that the lights light up as well, that makes it makes the ship look even more cooler. So, Legionnaires, I really do hope you're enjoying this episode because I'm quite enjoying doing it. Now, as I said before as well, the nacelles don't um, open and close, which would have been really cool, I think, if they actually did um, move just like they actually did in Voyager itself. But at least the actual impulse engines light up. And you can see what on the nacelles there, they actually are all lit up along with the massage collectors and the deflector dish lights up as well. So Legionnaires, I will leave it there for a minute and you guys can enjoy this awesome ship in motion. Um, I'm just going to let it put it in some autopilot so that way it can, it can show you more of what it can do better than I can and I'll put it in cinematic mode as per usual so that way you can have a good look. I will now shut up and let it do its thing.
Now, while we're flying around Legionnaires, I may as well re-say the good old saying, which is don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel, as it really does help us out. Unfortunately, over the last few days, we lost a couple of our Legionnaires. It is a very sad moment. I, I personally, I know this is only a small channel, and we're only just getting off the ground, but it really did... It felt, it's, it felt bad. It's really sucked. So, I mean, I, I'm, I know the content's not for everyone, and I do apologise for that. But still, you know, it, it made me feel really bad. So if you do really want to make the Legion grow and make me feel a little bit better about everything, do head down to that subscribe button and subscribe to the channel and like this video if you quite enjoy it. Now we're about to crash by the look of it. No, no. Ah, oh, a bit of skimming there. That's okay. I think we will have to take command of Voyager once again for us to save this there we go, out we come. And I will admit, at least with the ship, it doesn't glitch into the world all that much, so it's not too much of a problem. But, you know, like you just saw there, it can be a bit of a pain on that autopilot, but it is what it is in this world. So yes, like I was saying, we lost a couple of Legionnaires. I mean, I know it's the that's the way of the game at the moment in YouTube and just about anything in general. But it did make me feel a little sad, you know, because like I said, we are a small channel. We are hopefully growing with more and more videos that we make that you guys, my Legionnaires, are enjoying. Because I do put in as much effort as I can. I do admit some of my videos are a little bit not so good. But I do try my absolute best. I'm not the best at editing. I'm trying my best with what I got, so please bear that in mind. Don't bite my head off. I do my best. Now, I will attempt to land this thing. I'm not the best at landing, as you saw with the Enterprise, so we're going to try and go for the bigger runway. Oh, what the fuck? No. That would actually kind of be cool. But we don't want to attack um, unarmed civilians. Alrighty, there's the runway. Alrighty. Kill engines. We might actually have a decent landing here or not we might just fall short we're gliding in nicely uh, okay okay we're almost there a bit more power to the engines cut engines so cut engines boom there we go, Legionnaires, we have landed. No, 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 don't start your engines. We're not starting engines. We are landing. Alright. We will see you on the ground, Legionnaires, because it is not very graceful of how we get out of this ship. It is actually my other amusing, but I will show you that another time. So we'll see you on the ground, Legionnaires, and we will close out the episode. Hey, Bill. Can you move it along? I'm all out of time, guys. And just like that, Legionnaires, we are back on the ground, safe and sound, right next to our Nissan Titan, the faithful beast that will just keep on appearing in our world of GTA. Now, if you like this episode, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button as it really, really does help us out. It will make me feel a little bit better about losing some of our Legionnaires. Unfortunately, it was a it's a sad moment. And if you enjoy this episode, there are plenty of more GTA ones in the playlist and there's also ARC ones if you enjoy ARC go head over to those playlists and like every single video as because just because you can you're a part of the Legion that's what we do so Legionnaires until the next one